<laughs> Hello, welcome to Spiritist Network. All right. So, um, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody on the internet if you're with us. If you're not with us, then welcome to. Uh, tonight we're talking about what is Spiritism, Alan Kardec's um, book. And we're on the third dialogue with the priest. Um, and we're continuing on. Um, last week we talked about the priest's fourth question and today so today we're trying to get on to five and six if we can so I know we all you know read the material to you know <laughs> we all have lots of questions um, so I actually wanted to kind of just start us off with because um, last week what did we what did we talk about last week materialism we were talking about at the fourth question it was about the belief in the future life so it was, it was basically talking about how, like, when you realize that um, that this life doesn't just end when we die, that we go on and we have consequences for what we what we live. It changes the way that that you live. So yeah, you're, you know, we're talking about materialism and and how the belief in the future life kind of changes um, kind of changes the way you live. So I kind of wanted to just throw this out. The the priest next question. You know, like without just reading what Alan Kardec says, but the priest says like religion teaches us all this stuff. Religion teaches us that there's a future life, that there's a heaven, that you know, all this stuff that religion tells us. So it says, why is there a need for a new doctrine? So I want to actually just start by asking you guys, what do you think? Like, because I, I can tell you, like I was raised in a Christian house, <laughs> you know, and then it, it wasn't really enough for me. Um, but what about what about for you guys? Like we have we talk about Christianity, or we talk about um, you know the Jewish religion, or um, Muslim. Muslim or Islam, Islam, or anything Buddhism, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know why why do we need spiritism? Mm -hmm. well, spiritism to me is not. A in fact, if you, if you talk about what uh, Kardec is doing, uh, it, I mean, it looks like a doctrine, but it isn't a doctrine. It's a, it's a point. Uh, religions have doctrines. But this, sort of, it's a, this is a philosophy, and it's a growing philosophy, and it is it, it absolutely where I, I had no interest in religion. And our home was, uh, uh, we, we were, uh, we, we just didn't pay attention to it. Yeah, and on the Jewish holidays, yeah, we did kind of uh, enjoy the uh, uh, traditions, but that's about it. But uh, but as uh, you know, as life went on, I was uh, <clears throat> looking to get happy, you know, or looking for something, whatever it was. But uh, I didn't find it in any of the religions. And believe me, I checked them all out. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Me too. I know what you mean. And uh, but philosophy and this I did understand. Even the word philosophy, which is uh, really means the love of knowledge, what about that knowledge? What is that knowledge that we don't get in college? What is that that, that, that experience? And then when it finally did hit, it hit me hard. I mean, I became uh, really really taken up with it. But again, it was not it was not the as I put it, uh, the doctrine always, always turned me off, and if uh, I sometimes I get the feeling that uh, that even in, in the exposing myself to spiritism, there's a tendency to move and call it a doctrine, and I and, and I object to that. I don't I don't think it's it's a doctrine. I don't think Kardec meant it to be. Yeah. And you're right. Mm -hmm. So. So for the ones just joining us, um, we were, <clears throat> we're starting off um, the, sec the third dialogue with the priest, and we're on question five, and before we even got into it, I was just kind of asking, because the priest's question is that, um, <clears throat> basically just sort of some, like in context, he's saying, you know, we, we know, like religion actually teaches us that there's a future life, that there's, you know, that when we die, we don't just like turn to nothingness, we, we, we have to face the consequences of our actions. And because like religion tells us all these things, like all the religions actually kind of tell us all these things, 
why is there a need for spiritism? So I just kind of want to ask you guys here, like why, like if we if I if I could just go to church, you know, and get what I needed, what like why do I have to come here or what you know? Just I'm just kind of want to hear what you guys have to say. Like why do you? I think uh, humans are just curious. You know, we're, we're curious by nature, and uh, you know we try to figure things out. You know and Sometimes when somebody tells you that something, especially you know religion-based or a doctrine, you know we don't necessarily we don't accept it. Even the people who say they are religious and go to church regularly, they probably have their own doubts, but they're not willing to face them or you know look in the you know look for anything beyond their little you know box that they're in. But I just say that you know we're just curious and we just like to look for our own ans- look for our own answers. Hmm. That's good. I know that uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, hello everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, couldn't be avoided, so appreciate uh, <laughs> letting me in. So I'm glad to be here. The doors don't actually lock. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> saw me sneaking in, didn't you? It's okay. <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think for me, uh, as soon as you asked that question, what I heard <laughs> is um, Jesus said there'd be more that would have come. Um, so that was already been provided to us. Uh, he said there would be more that would come that would reinforce what I'm telling you or trying to teach you, uh, and then there'd be more. Um, so I, I don't know exactly where that is um, in, in written form. We probably might be able to discover that before it's over, but you know. But um, so there's there's that lineup that says, oh, and there's more. So um, that's my understanding. That's what I believe. I, I read. It's beyond the beatitude. So, so it's <laughs> so there you go, right? Well, beyond the beyond, you know, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> we're going with this now. Um, so for me, it was easy to answer that question from that perspective. Um, if anybody has any uh, further info on, on where exactly or what that parable might be, uh, but it does exist uh, in written form. Yeah, everybody, we all know. So, not so much written form. I think it uh, comes from within. Um, I, mm. I've studied a little glimpse of all the religions, and, and there's probably more that I've, I haven't studied, but the common theme is that the, uh, it, it, it tries to, you looking for God, or your essence, or the meaning of life, or Jesus, or whatever, we have to find it within, and within is, is, is hard to, to, to it's, scary, it's a scary place to look within, and to empower yourself, that's, that's these, these spiritism, uh, all these, es- there's a very esoteric, uh, very elite uh, type of thinking, uh, teaching that empowers you to, mm. to to look for God within yourself and to bring out that, that, that goodness of, of God, the goodness of Jesus, the goodness of, of oneness, which is a big part of most religions, that oneness. It, and it's hard to define. You can't experience it until you, until you um, know, you start knowing things, start knowing your connection to to the universe, your connection to to God, and it's mm. a scary place. Mm. And once you find that place, life's a l- little bit less scary. Um, Good observation. Yeah. I I just thought about the. I met an Egyptian today, and uh, I just thought about the Egyptians right now where this whole thing, this connection with the higher, uh, a divinity or a higher sense of life was a, uh, a ritual of initiation. Remember? Remember? It was when the scientists, when they found out about all what they got there from the Egyptian, the knowledge of the Egyptian, they they would continue the ritual just like the Egyptian and to initiate some people, an elite group, to that new knowledge or that old knowledge. So, like, because he was saying that, um, Reggie was saying that, these, that it is something that it comes within, it is an innate thing. Uh, the human being is always looking to uh, uh, looking forward to reach God, whatever God is, and or whatever God is, and and the other thing is that we will not stop. I think we will not stop. And the spiritism we're talking about spiritism 
because I I uh, read and and tried um, to know a little bit the other religions, the 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 key differentiator to me uh, specifically in the Spiritism is that number one, it takes the religious uh, the rituals and those dogma, things away. The dogma. The dogma fact away, which I like, and it's uh, lighter because it's more like a philosophy, as you said. It has the the, the triple uh, aspects: the religious, the, the philosophy, and the science aspect, which I like it too. And so, if you are more a religious pe person, you can bring that to, in a religious sense, and if you are more scientific, you can also bring that to that direction. Or if you prefer philosophy, you can also bring that to that direction. It's up, really up to you. But to me, spiritism, it is not a religion and it is not, although some people, they prefer it this way, that it looks like, that sounds like, it feels like more like a religion. But I think spiritism, to me, I think spiritism is the best uh, spiritual school yet. The best one. I don't know if, if it's going to remain the best one because now that we know that we can get in touch with the spirits, and then if we are serious about with our intentions, we can develop this uh, knowledge and we can get to know more about this spiritual realm. And it's kind of like everybody says, well, this country has the best. Uh, uh, you know, this government, this type of government, this country is the, is the best around, you know. You, you, <laughs> so you go talk with me, and when I take a good look at it, I said, if this is the best, oh my goodness, you know, you're you know, in bad shape. Because, Absolutely, I, mean, I agree. As far as democracy, you know, with the, with the majority rules, well, the majority are saying. idiots, you know, what do you, what do you <laughs> this, is, this is what we're running into. Yeah, yeah. So you saw I now be spending a good part of today as a matter of fact thinking about what is a better way? What is a right. better way to do right. this? Because this country is really negative and yeah. crazy. There has to be a better way. And what should we do to make it that way? I, I totally see your analogy and I really like it and uh, just one opinion, that's my opinion. It's we still humans we have this tendency to bring whatever philosophy to bring uh, to give a religious connotation to to uh, make it heavy with dogmas and things and we still want that we still I see that in the spiritism movement too I see some spiritist center everybody dresses white although we know that what attracts spirits is the thought not what we wear or how we look like it's the thought is the frequency the vibration of our feelings, of our emotions. But it's still, there are people that put paintings of Jesus Christ and Alan Kardec and the spirits like, for example, those spirits that used to help here, Kardec, and they put on the wall and they come on in white and they take it like a ritual. Because it's the tendency, I, that's just one point of view. We still are not, we, we, we think so, we are arrogant enough to say, oh, we are ready to know everything, are we? And if, if, that, helps, to go, right? if that helps that person, like, get in the right frame of mind, because yeah. even though I agree. that person might, yeah. like, see all that stuff and just, like, it, it tunes their thoughts in, because I, I used to kind of do some of that stuff. I have the crystals, and I have Me the, too. I have so the giant God triangle much. hanging up in my yeah. wall, you know. Yeah. What's the difference of it being a tendency or or it being a tool to get your mindset mo you know, more focused on how your mindset is supposed to be at the moment, even if you're wearing whatever color, you know? Because I read about that today, that's such a coincidence, but I would mm -hmm. like to ask no, if anyone would like to answer to the question. That's a, that's a philosophy that's taught in a lot of teachings, a lot of uh, psychologists psychiatrists have written most of these philosophies mm -hmm. either for the government or for their independence or for other religions and for their own purpose and basically it's it's, it's a, a repentance which is a big Christian word and that's uh, change the way you think and it's a practice it's called uh, um, 
it's called objective observation. So you basically you everything that you're thinking, you're thinking like it's raw. You're not thinking what you've been taught. Like you've been taught that this is the reality, and you have to reanalyze that. I'm not saying re that's not reality, but to reanalyze re analyze everything that you've been taught to see the world differently, to change that point of view, especially when things don't go right in the world. You know, the world kind of puts that pressure on you to refocus your mind. To something, because we're, we're, I think we're meant here to be in, in a bliss, in a happiness. And we're striving for that always, that bliss, that happiness, that contentment. And that's our purpose in this world, looking for a purpose, looking for happiness. And sometimes it doesn't happen. To refocus your mind is a practice. And a lot of, yeah, yeah. Now, you see it through all, all the teachings. They do it either through a dance, they threw it, they threw it through uh, mantras, which mm -hmm. is prayers and whatnot. You know, so you, and you make, but you make it your own. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's something that is natural that it comes from your inner being when you are, you are at peace with that piece of knowledge, and then it continues. Just like love, when we reach love. We, we won't need anything else because we will be able to transform everything around us. But until we get there, mm -hmm. we will be, you know, trying different things and we can condition our thoughts to, or we can get to know our inner uh, knowledge and to see if this is old, I don't need it any longer, or I like this one better. Mm -hmm. This is new, like a spiritism for me, for example. Mm -hmm. Oh, I prefer this one instead of the one that I have. I used to have Catholicism, nothing against it. It's beautiful. It but I, I say, no, this one, I, I like it better now. Or it's something that you, when you reach your... The thing is to look inwards because we have the, the God's law written in our consciousness. So, mm -hmm. so it is better to look inward and try to feel. To you, for it's a called manifestation of you condition yeah. yourself. Yeah, because it comes so from the will will condition you. Yeah. The real propaganda will tell you exactly. what. Yeah. And you have to write your own gospels. I mean, write your own Bible. Write your, you know what I mean? And, and so question. these other religions are very blasphemy. You know, how mm -hmm. dare you question Jesus? How dare you question? Yeah. Yeah, with a religion, I mean, yeah. that's, and that's really what kind of Alan Kardec gets into is he says a religion sort of tells you what you need to think and tells you what you need to do. Instead of like the spiritism showing us like this is this is what we need to do, you right. know? Mm. and and yeah. really, but I agree with pretty much everything. You, you can disagree too. Yeah, I can, but I'm sorry, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I, what I wanted to say is that on that path that we all are to find our happiness and our bliss and and our connection with God, which is, at, at the end of the day, religion, um, we we have a number of tools at, at our disposal, and any of the religions may be of use at a certain moment or for certain people. Um, so, in that sense, I think um, we uh, also being Catholic in this incarnation, but probably, I'm pretty sure, in different incarnations, many other things. We've and, been all. And yeah, as as long as I've been um, pursuing that purpose, I think they all all the religions have a a, a sense uh, for that or for someone at a certain moment. Uh, now. It's when you know everything that you've said comes, and I what I think is all of that applies to me right now. So for me right now, <laughs> this is the path that it's helping me to you know move one step farther. I don't know if in 200 years, um, Spiritism has evolved through humans. Uh, will um, stand up to its word of, you know, not being a closed doctrine and being uh, a science. So evolving with uh, new discoveries and and with new information and with new insights and 
um, I hope it will, but you know, if it doesn't, because we we're humans, uh, kind of molding it, or you know, through our practice, um, then we'll have to you know evolve into something else. I think yeah, humans is limiting you, but this form is, is such a beautiful form that we're in, and uh, again, a spirit or spiritism is is beyond this form, and this form is. Spirit also, very, very right. spiritual yeah. in your form, and to use it and to honor it, and, but to know that it's just temporary and, and right. in the present moment, and, and to know that she, you're, when I, when I look at all the religions, I look at things that are unlimited, I look, look for words like uh, boundlessness, um, limitlessness, um, infinite, um, yeah. a lot of the teachings, they limit you, they're finite, they're, you know, you, there's a birth mm -hmm. and a death, mm -hmm. I mean, beautiful. a lot of the teachings, it's really hard to put, wrap your head around. There's no such thing as birth. There's right. no such thing as death. Mm -hmm. Heaven and hell lose its meaning, and, and it's just present moment now. And <clears throat> it's it's tough because you're you're so it, just you're hanging on to these things. You're hanging on to this physical form, mm. and it's it's hard to let go. Yeah, mm. I just have something quickly to add. As that Kardec said that spiritism, it's not the uh, religion of the future is the future of the religions. You get that? I like that. Because all the religions, they will get to know, because the science will reach the point that will, it will prove the spirit. It will prove reincarnation. It's already, we already mm -hmm. have that in science. So it is the future of all religions. It's not the religion of the future, because, because someone asked, so everyone will be spiritist one day? No, God like said no. Not the religion of the future, it's the future of the religion. It's different. Because the religion will get to know all these natural laws, all this, and they will reach this information in. You know, he said that, and when I really take a look at that statement, I have to question it, because the religion okay. as we know it seems to interfere with spiritism. Really? Yeah. yeah be, be, there are with some the doctrines people... and what I, I think it interferes with. It mm. doesn't encourage it. I mean, they, perhaps some religions are more right. open than right. others. But, uh, but here's the thing. Uh, the religion, we have to separate the religion from the, you know, the people that attend to the religion. So, uh, there the, are people that they study spiritism and they are Christians. They are Catholic. They are... Um, how do you call this in English? The Candomblé, Macumba? The, it's not Buddhism. It's not Buddhism. Santeria. Santeria. Yeah, there are people. Yeah, the the spiritual center I used to go, there used to be a guy that he was uh, the owner of the Santeria Center, and he used to go to the spiritual center, and he was all dressed up, and he was never ever questioned because the spiritism is like. It's, it's like a science that anyone can go and study and take whatever they want and go. You, you don't have to be part of it. Anyways, but um, Kardec explains, because we don't have talk, time to talk about everything, but he explained that anyone could use this and add to whatever religion you have, whatever philosophy you have, and you're not going to be inconsistent because... If this is true, it should be consistent with any religion. And to be honest with you, that's what I've seen. Everywhere that I go, of course I have to translate the words, but it's consistent. Even with the, the law of one, raw, the law of one, it's consistent. It's consistent with a course in miracles. It's consistent with... Uh, uh, Catholicism. Catholicism, thank you. It's it's consistent. It is just how people interpret. I could interpret really well, like what they say it, with the Bible, consistent with the Bible, consistent with the Quran. It's consistent and, and an extension. Uh, I'd like to break it down in the in the small movie parts here. You you had when I walked in, you were talking about. I can't hear you. You were talking about doctrine, <laughs> and the word doctrine was kind of in your way. And I want to give, I want to simplify this. The the definition of doctrine is teaching. 
is instruction. This is from Webster. I didn't write the book, but Webster. <laughs> um, so let me expand. Something that is taught, a principle or position or the body of principles in which a branch of knowledge or system of belief. Now you can find others that talk about of religion or a political party or another group. So we're talking about another group, right? And not necessarily a religion. So let's just get, I think, let's use the word doctrine to be, hey, it's information that can be taught and learned. So don't get worried, hung up on doctrine, because I think that shouldn't right. be. So that because was really, over time really. people had changed the, the right. word. So, right, so it's teachings. Very good. Um, I see, I, you know, that it, it would overlap with, uh, I'm Catholic, raised Catholic, confirmed in the Catholic Church. Uh, it overlaps with the teaching and extends. I think, or I talked about a few months ago in this group, you know, there's a couple places in the Bible that have removed the statements of incarnation. There's still one that exists when you talked about uh, Elijah. Elijah coming back. So this is Jesus speaking. I think Matthew or someone is recording this. Um, so, you know, the religion has its own way, you know, and the Roman Catholics, way back when, you know. This is a hundred years later, right? So let's modernize some of this. Let's talk to the people so they understand what we're even talking about. So I think Spiritism brings that as well. I, I kind of like the fact, and let me make one more analogy. I remember growing up in high school, we had this thing called Campus Life. Um, campus get, what? Campus Life. And we would get together in groups and go to people's houses and... Um, we'd sing Billy Joel songs and then take them apart and go, you know, that means, you know, you're hiding a mask, you know, different lyrics and things, and we would, we would talk about stuff. Um, but then I was school, my older brother, he started liking this other progressive church, and we would go to church every Sunday because our parents would take us, right? Um, uh, but I wasn't religious, and I didn't know, you know, I know how all the stuff works and the, the story of Jesus and Moses, some of these things, but I wasn't like you know, that wasn't my life. I just was going to school and I'm learning because this is what parents are teaching me. My brother would want to go to this progressive church and they have high mass and they're singing and he liked that. And this is an extension of what we talked about because, hey, that worked for him. He didn't like our church anymore. He's 17 years old. He learned to play guitar. Now he's off on his own church. You know, this kind of thing. So, hey, that worked for him. Whatever allows him to plug in and find, you know, his connection to his higher self. Right, so you guys were talking about this earlier, right? And you were talking, so you know, I like the fact that this is open, it's easy, you know, we, it's not all this, you know, structure, oh, go down and turn right, turn left again, you know, well, what if I could just go there? Do I get the same thing? So this is allowing you to get the information. You don't have to be so coarse or so strained in, in a procedure, right, or a process. And I think that's a, another open point. Um, and it becomes to me, hey, this is information. Hey, this is information you might be interested in. Um, this is what I'm reading about. Look at this. And it extends what we've already learned. And that's how it's, it's spawning. That's how it's expanding because we're not pushing it on you. We're not adding all this new structure and this new religion and woe. It's information that extends beyond and it gives you the, the freedom to, to wear whatever color you want. You know, turn your head to the left or turn it to the right. But uh, So that's the beauty for me. It allows that freedom, uh, and then it overlaps and extends what I know. And I've never studied more um, about this type of thing my whole life. I think I've been exposed to it. Um, and, you know, right now, it's perfect for me. Just like you said, this is what I want. Because this is giving me the information that I need. The freedom is empowerment. You're empowering yourself to, to think for yourself. So. Not not to believe what someone else is thinking, somebody else's thoughts, somebody else's doctrines. But you can listen to it, but it's up to you if you want to believe it or not. Does it resonate with you? And it does, right? That's why we're here. You're, okay, yeah. uh, make it, tell me more. A little, that thing you just tell me a little more, right? So this is how it works for me and, it, and for us, I think, because we're here doing it again this week. All right, hey, tell me more. What do you think about that? So it, it's working. Right? Um, and it's extending and it allows us to go, mm, yeah, you know what? That kind of works. What else? Thank you, Steve, for such an easy question. <laughs> what else? What else? <laughs> Gee, what kind of question was that? Well, you know, like, from kind of what Scott was saying, too, I was just thinking about, like, religion teaches people, like, to conform to, like, one 
idea or with spirit is mm-hmm. like actually our strength is coming from our diversity. Mm-hmm. You know? But yeah. we have like people here from all different walks of life and we all kind of bring some other kind of experience. And that's kind of what I like about spiritism too is like the it, as spiritists we're always studying, we're always encouraged to study something, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like religious stuff. <laughs> like like you know, we have the one guy the center loves quantum physics, and that's like his whole thing is quantum physics, you know, or whatever it is you choose to study. It could be engineering, or it could be, you know, filmmaking, or it could be, <laughs> like, anything. So for me, it's it's almost like, because um, before I got to spiritism, I was studying um, Tai Chi and martial arts and Qi Gong and all this, you know, Eastern, <laughs> Eastern stuff, and that's kind of actually how I found spiritism. Like, I like spiritism so much because... Um, you know, the word, the word Kung Fu actually has nothing to do with fighting. It actually means um, time and effort. Mm-hmm. So anything that you, like, put a lot of time and effort into, like, for me, it was, like, my cappuccino making. <laughs> like, I, like, every day, you know, I make a cappuccino, and, like, I try to make it better than I did the day before. You know, I try to always perfect, constantly improve. Do you know this guy? <laughs> you know. I want cappuccino, man. <laughs> want cappuccino? When I first came to the Spirit Center, um, you know, I heard lectures from people, and they weren't really talking about religion and, and too much stuff that I, I would have kind of had a hard time grasping. They were talking about, like, trying to, like, self-improve. And um, I, cause I remember the first, one of the first lectures I heard, the guy drew from all these different sources, and he had, like, Mother Teresa and Gandhi and Jesus, like, all, like, quoted in this lecture. Like, isn't that cool? He's like bringing all these different things, and it's not like just like Kardec and Chico, like you know. Not that that's bad. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's cool that we can we can branch out a little bit, and um, and you know. Do you have any questions from Facebook? Like, because I see you the Facebook open. Well, we have we have a guy called John Santos watching, and I was gonna actually say you were you were talking, but he actually said a few of the things that you said like right before you said it. Mm-hmm. Like, he said, um, spiritism isn't the religion of the future, but the future of all religions. Wow. So he was like, you that yeah. just as you were saying. So, connected. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what can I say? Nice. But, uh, no, no questions so far, as far as I can see. Okay. Uh, we appreciate the comments. <laughs> um, Sound is out of sync. Oh. They can see your lips moving from over there. <laughs> right? I can't really fix that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not right now. So, mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, if anybody else has anything else to say on that topic. Um, so, on to the next question. Um, so, yeah, and Alan Kardec says that um, basically. I mean, we all kind of said it, that religion kind of teaches us what we should believe, but spiritism proves it and shows it. And actually, and spiritism doesn't really disagree with religion on a lot of points, just that it um, it has it sort of further goes to prove it. Um, so then the priest says, you cannot deny the fact that spiritism is not in agreement with religion on all points. So um, this actually made me think of a uh, lecture I, I heard um, last year at another center that um, a guy was talking about the differences from religions. He was talking ma- mainly about like Christianity with, um, I guess he was saying Islam and Buddhism. Um, and what he, what he was talking about um, like the one of others as you would have them do unto you is actually like the one main like golden thread the things that they like disagree and 
write about so much are just these like little articles of faith that just like little things like um, the Christians were saying our God is the one true God, but but the Muslims they their God is not the true God. You know, but, like this was actually kind of like a thing. Like I'm really paraphrasing it, and then like the Pope one time said like no Christian and Muslims like we all have the same God you know we're all worship the same God but then but then it kind of came out like you know the next Pope came along and said no different gods <laughs> ours is the only one there, there's this fake you know so um, but the priest kind of he says like how can you you know you cannot deny the fact that spirit is not in the group of religion at all points Alan Carter says, no, they all say the same thing. Um, so, I, I don't know, I just found this this section pretty good. I don't know, maybe I'll just read it. Because I, I, I really like what Alan Carter had to say. Um, the Spirit proclaimed a soul God who is supremely just and good. They said human beings are free and are responsible for their action, and that they are rewarded and punished according to the good or evil that they have done. They place above all other virtues, evangelical charity, and the sublime rule taught by Christ, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Aren't these the foundations of every religion? And the spirits have done even more. They have initiated us into the mysteries of the future life which for us is no longer an abstraction but a reality. So, uh, so what do you guys think of that? Agree. <laughs> it's duality is tough to get out of this. Mm -hmm. Once you realize that you and God are the same and oneness, it's a tough, tough self for some people. They don't want to give up their individuality. <laughs> Let me ask you this, when you say that you and God are the same, you mean I am God the creator of all things? Part of the, the teachings, the esoteric teachings of manifestation, mm -hmm. and we do, we have free will, we do manifest, we do create, and right. we can create a different world if we choose, or just go along with what we're told, this is the world. So we have a choice to step out of the box and create our own universe. We can go out and create another car, create another whatever you want to create. Some people they just learn that power. They just go and flow. They just kind of I'm just gonna go out and tell them nine to five job. That's the reality, and that's looking at the world like this. Oh, I agree, but could I create in the same level as God creates? Yes. The creator of all things? Yes. It's scary. Okay. It's scary. That's the best way to get um, Again, I'm... I don't agree because... I, 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 was, I, I, I can't wrap my head around it. Either. No, I agree with you that I can create tons of things and so much more that I can even comprehend and understand. I understand that. And we do, we study that in spiritism. We study that there are spirits, they're so evolved that they can create planets. Like Jesus Christ, we believe that Jesus Christ not only created the planet Earth, but created all other planets as well. We do believe that. So uh, there are evolved spirits that they can create in galaxies and everything. But the creative of all that created the system that allowed me to create all the universe, it has to be someone, because if this one is the same as me, then who created this one? This is the same as me. You got it? I, I, I have a question for you. Yeah, that's, that, that's making out external. Like that. That's a duality. And um, when you live with the science aspect of it in terms of what's oxygen, defining spirit. We're oxygen, basically, which is in our water and our air, and we glow. If we can glow, but we just need to high, do a higher vibration. That's all. We're just so narrow-minded, and so the awareness we just don't quite know. 
Oh, never mind. But once you know, we could be in a, a level of understanding that allow us to understand this much, and then we will be we, we with are, more experience. We will be ready for more knowledge. What do you think? Every there's perfection in everything, and some people see the world as imperfect. imperfect. They see death, dying, disease, and that's what I see the world in with perfection. And it's it's a tough sell too because you're bombarded with imperfection and it's just something wrong. That's someone else's point of view. I feel it. I'm, you have to put. And I don't know where you come from. I mean, I, I understand well, the the thought how. Well, this is where you have to rethink everything, and then once you get the constructs of of the universe and understand it, and then apply yourself to it, you can actually you, you can do extraordinary things right. in your life beyond your, your, your like superhero. You, you, we have that ability, but again, yeah. we're not aware of it. Mm -hmm. We have all the knowledge already in everything. It's there. We're just not aware of it. And once you kind of take those veils, take the propaganda, take all that away, object, objectively reinterpret it all, which is, again, a tough place to go, a scary place. You become boundless, you become infinite, you become... Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to believe anything, you know everything. But why create all the trouble? What is the reason? What is the meaning of all the experiences that we had to go through create to disharmony. unveil? You can, you can create disharmony. But what for? Because because there's 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 human, there's there's. But if I am God and I know that all the goodness that exists, why create the other things to complicate the 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 path? Why? What is the reason? Well, I think there's people that want to be very practical just, reason. Yeah. Sure. Give me, yeah, Mister. I mean, it's like sitting on the deck. It feels so good when you get up. We're able to compare. <laughs> You know, think about it. It's, it'd be boring. But if I all those, but I don't know your God. But if if I am God, the creator of all things, what would you? I would I would remove all the trouble and make everything angel. Let's Everybody do it. Let's angel. Do it. Well, let, let's, let's 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 slow down to to balance as a world <laughs> human being. So the world in in the realm of the ability of the human being, there, are we? Contains the spirit. We we do manifest. We are co-creators. Okay, yeah, we get like that. that. We are co-creators, and we can manifest things in our own world in our own I'm reality. I'm a troublemaker tonight. And you're a troublemaker you in your own reality and other reality. creatures, that's another... Because other creatures may be much more evolved than we are mm -hmm. in this planet. And oh, yeah. we just think that we are arrogance. But why... Why do you say this is all trouble? I mean... No, you know, not all. Uh, just causing said trouble that well. The that other things that we don't want to deal with in order to... Like, the veil. He mm -hmm. was talking about things will be unveiled. Why is not unveiled already if we are God, if we well, are creator of all things? Obviously, why the trouble? Why not be because, angel already? Obviously, the, the, reason, reason, we are angels. the reason why it's obviously behind the veil. But there must be. Because one. of love. Okay, so <laughs> let, me, let, let me simplify. You can extend it if you want. This planet, we're here for a purpose. We're here for trial and expiation to evolve ourselves. We're evolved to a point where this is the highest planet we can go to, okay? And this planet isn't so nice planet. That's it. So we're going to wake up every day and try to be better and hope that our neighbor is better too, right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to do it every single day. Hopefully we're going to do it every single day. We're going to learn from all these trials. If we don't learn from the trials, the same one comes around again, and it hurts just as bad. And if we don't learn from that time, the same one's going to come around again. And this can happen in the same lifetime. So, trial and expiation is why we're here. We are beings of the human persuasion. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, we are co-creators. And when we... We put our mind to something. You ever walked around and go, you know, I'm going to do that. And you go do it. Because that's what you wanted. You planned it. You saw it. You studied it. And you got the job. You mowed the grass. You fixed the flowers. You... Fix the roof, whatever you did. Everything's a spiritual act. So the, these things you think about, I want to go traveling. Next thing you know, if some deal comes along and you, you can afford the ticket. Okay, this is what happens in your life. You're yeah. co-creating your own reality. We get all that. However, I just want to remind this group, um, we are humans. We are here for, because we are here. 
and we are we are need to grow, and so we are also living in how far we can go as a human. Now, as a spirit, when I go to sleep and I go somewhere, I can do all kinds of things, but I can't do it when I get back down here in this physical realm. What was the esteemed question? Just a second. What was the question again? Am I making lost. any sense? Right. So I love where you're going, and so we get to create our own reality. It's, it's very um, but the fact we don't get to create divine laws. Like I don't get to create gravity. Somebody already did that. But for him, yes. He believes. Yes, he believes so. It's kind of good. That seems a little tricky. Here. I can I take don't gravity away if we want. I don't think we disagree with that. But, but, you, but the, the thing is, don't take just, gravity. So I was just trying to like balance the whole thing. What Cynthia is saying is that I'm not saying wrong or right. I'm just saying for me that's perspective. No, I don't think we disagree. But I, what I heard from her is yes, all of that. But why? Why? Why is that? Yes, he he said a kilo, and I under I did not understand a gram. That's why I asked. Well, see, let me, let me let me jump in here for a minute because um. Thank you. Because the the things that Reggie's talking about are all things that I've experienced. Um, because I I want to say these are very popular spiritual ideas that I have a lot of friends um, before I found spiritism um, that were talk about how we're all perfect and have, have some of these ideas that say everything we do is perfect. And for me, I had a really hard time believing that. I, I, I actually tried to sort of grasp it, but what Spiritism offered me was a different perspective that, because I said, if it's all perfect, then, you know, I, I had to say, why? Like, why is this? Like, why is that? Like, if it's all perfect, you know, because I had a hard time grasping, because some, some of my friends that would say, like, it's all perfect. Everything you do is perfect. Yeah. Like, like there's, you can't do anything wrong. Like, like whatever, like it is that you want to do is what you should do. Like you should follow your heart. And some of them, like they sound like very good ideas, but then I've seen people like use this as a mask to like do things like sleep around and do things like that. And, and you know, and you can say like, well, right, but if it's perfect, all perfect, perfect, I don't have to do anything. I'm, I'm in touch I with agree. my divine sexuality. You know, they, they would say all these kind of things. Perfect for I'm him. a divine feminine. I'm a divine masculine. You know, all these kind of ideas. And I... When you get into witchcraft, I, I kind of... I, I've taught... I, I've, I've been to those classes and I understand the arrogance yeah. in that. So just to... Just to get a feel for the, the whole gamut of this this area yeah yeah I mean because I, I understand that. I would I would try a lot of different yeah. things you know that's that's kind of how I wound up yeah. with these Brazilian people was I, I, I <laughs> you know I was like I would just like go like, oh, yeah, yeah. I would try all kinds of like the Kashik record and I tried uh, interesting. Um, the Aliu and Del Rey you know well, you believe all, in Akashic records and yeah, spiritism it's all you know, and it's all different you know but I had a hard time grasping some of it you know because because um but when spiritism offered me the the idea that we're here to like go through trials, because I actually I actually have I'm very close with the spiritual. <laughs> we we live together. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, rent, I rent a room, so there's not, nothing crazy, okay? But um, we believe you. All right. So so I was like she would tell me like oh I'm you know like she was telling I don't want to put her business out there. <laughs> tell me about like her relationship with her mother and they don't have a good relationship and she's like well our souls agreed that when we got here this is how it was going to be and this is just it and we're done predestination you know? <laughs> yeah and so but the oh, spiritists yeah. don't believe in predestination we we believe that you might like have some like sort of course points you're supposed to hit while you're here but the idea that i'm stuck here like with, with a mother that I'm going to hate for the rest of my life, like, we have the power to change that, you know, so, so I say, okay, I disagree with that, you know, and, and I say, like, what's the point, like, I, I just think it makes a lot more sense when we talk about being here on this planet, you know, because I didn't really like when the spirit said this is a planet of trials and expiation, like, I didn't really like that, you know, <laughs> like, I was, I was like, I don't want to be here on this planet, like, suffering, you know? Clean up. <laughs> like, I don't want to suffer, you know, but, but when they give us the idea that this the suffering on earth is temporary, we can move on. I mean, it's it's one of those things that you can't really like argue for it or against it. Like it's kind of you can hear it from the spirits a lot of things. This is just my opinion. Like a lot of things I read in the spirits book, I'm like I would read them and I'd be like, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this or disagree with it, but it, it does make a little bit of sense. So I'm gonna kind of keep like keep moving on. I kept studying and kept studying. But um, when they when they give us the idea that like we're here as a trial, we can improve ourselves, 
we have you know some goals, but um, really, actually, all the things that you say, I would I would agree with almost a hundred percent. If um, if I was outside of my body, <laughs> you know, because that's that's it's amazing. Really, we have this ex this body and this experience. Yeah, I'm I mean, so grateful because we have this we material have this moment and this time to, you know. And to forget, uh, uh, to be in the present moment is another uh, good way of thinking also because people are always thinking about and stuff in the future, they're thinking about the crap in the past, and we're reminded all the time, the future, the past, insurance, we're going to, the hurricanes, it, it's... It, you should be grateful because some girls already already asked your phone numbers to me and I said, you know, I need to think about it because I'm not kidding. But uh, the idea is to... Uh, True! The girls are like, who is this guy? <laughs> so you, you. The you. guy off camera. You, you, you. <laughs> the guy off camera. <laughs> yeah, don't be on camera because they're already too public. Yeah. But anyways. I don't, I don't know yeah. if, I, if I'm probably deviating my mind to something else. I, I kind of feel out of it. Please do. <laughs> Steve, he, he, he got this gift to confuse people. Me? Steve? Oh, he? Oh. Yeah. Um, but when it's you were okay. talking about the conflict between the mom and the daughter, and you were talking about perfection, and um, it just I think it's just the way that you look at things. So like, oh, and nothing can go wrong because everything is perfect, everything is meant to be. Um, if you look at something as a problem that it was meant to be anyways, then I think you're just stuck and never progressing. But if you just look at things as a perfect opportunity instead of a problem, I think you're gonna just. Well, that's the step forward. Is, but I don't, know if, I don't know if it makes any yeah. sense of yeah, what I'm saying, but sense. when you were saying about perfection and how some people just um, believe that, oh, we came to we came to this life as to be that's, a that's conflicted, my that's my conflicted mom and daughter, and I'm not gonna do anything about it. You're just looking at the that's problem. Karma. You're not looking at the opportunity. Is the karma changing it? So I don't know. I think that restricts right. karma. No, I, I believe that. I have to say, I don't know if it's any weird. Buddhism and Hinduism. Right. And that's all. <laughs> so you're stuck with it. this. You have to. You gotta question stay. these things because you yeah. gotta, it limits you. Yeah. So any teaching that limits yeah. you, I. This, it doesn't even register in my mind anymore. I don't waste my time with it. So I'm always looking for infinite, boundlessness, um, Brahman, um, power, power of Brahman, uh, whatever teachings that, that, that give us, empower us. Not take power from us, energy from us. So you manage energy, you manage manifesting, you're creating a better world. I'm sad, right, that I am too less evolved person for you. I cannot be by your side anymore. By the way, you already created gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop gravity now, okay? Please. They, they would, they share it with me. So we I need gravity okay, to be keep ready. Earth, whatever it is right now. I'm just That's gonna really read cool. it. I just want to read what John Santos. Keeps the one, people can the one that I appreciate what you're saying. The one that I keep channeling. He said that I believe that we are co-creators and we create things at our levels of progress. As co-creators, we need God's will to allow us to create. However, God doesn't depend on our will to create God. To create. God, the supreme intelligent, is the creator of all things. I agree with you. There, and he says, there is only one thing that is fatal, fatal and it is for everyone, death, discarnation. I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's fatal. No, it's, I don't That's, think so, but I, anyways. I disagree that it's fatal. Well, on because the, on this if body, I am evolved the spirit, the I'm not going to incarnate anymore. John. Physical body. But what, what do you choose? What do, do we get a choice to what to do in this next form? What do you uh, next uh, incarnation? Part of a choice. What do they call that? Yeah. No, but if you reach a point that you don't need to incarnate any longer, hmm. how's you that? Get, you, get other jobs. you have enough en enough knowledge to be in the moment forever. The only thing you have is the present moment. So when you reach this point of love and compassion, you don't have to incarnate anymore. You're working on other things. What other things? Well, maybe you're creating galaxies and creating things. I don't know. I don't even. I don't creating even believe. Creating laws of nature, creating sure. new the, the reason skies why of the reason why I do not believe we are perfect <laughs> is that when we learn the same level of knowledge as Jesus have. 
I think we will understand that everything that we know right now has nothing to do with the reality. For now, we don't know what is real. We don't know what is true. For now, we have the necessary knowledge to keep, keep going, keep moving forward. When we reach that level of knowledge as Jesus, as, some, as a spirit like Jesus, for example, we will learn, oh my gosh, everything that I learned, forget about that. Something else. It's child's play. It's let's, something let's talk else. About, yeah, let's talk about a few steps beyond here, not quite that far. I don't know if we can. And Maybe that just be, a second because it's 9 o'clock. Okay, and I'll, I'll finish this quickly. Thank Thanks. you. So as we evolve, he's, part of he's our always role, taking 15 minutes on my time. <laughs> So I'm, we're going to blame Steve sure. for this. So, so our role is we remember we're part of what we do and we're here is to interact with others and help others, right? Well, when we as we elevate ourselves, we're always helping levels Can below us. This? So as you continue to evolve and you evolve, you're always working, you helping some being so or some spirits of some class or some order or some place so to evolve. Means you're doing it right now. Your sister needs help, your brother, the baby, whatever these things are, your husband, your wife, we're helping each other. So as you evolve, you, it's a different level of help. Now you're helping lower evolved beings. And you may come back to Earth and help Earth. You don't have to, but you might come back specifically for that. And there are some spirits who do that. We can rattle off a few. Um, but anyway, so, so there's plenty of work, right, to answer your question. There's plenty of work at all levels. Uh, it just gets a little bit more phenomenal. Can I, can I make this a little simpler? Okay, just to get back to uh, what you were saying, uh, Cynthia. Please. Uh, about your will would never going to be Jesus, right? Please, Doc. We don't have to. We don't have to. If you just follow the, the philosophy, the WWJD philosophy, okay? You got a problem? What would Jesus do? WWJD. <laughs> He's a problem to solve. Just do what he would do. You don't have to become Jesus. No, I'm just saying as an example. Well, this, I, I may, I'm simplifying it for you. Yeah. you but know. what about if it's another one that is like like Jesus? What, would what Yoda, is his name? What would Yoda do? Or her so then do what Yoda exactly. does Exactly, thank you. What well, well that's right, that's right. Now, my kids, my, you know, they, they got a lot of respect for a rabbi, uh, uh, Dr. Stanley, you know. <laughs> so they don't, they don't say WWJD, they say WWDB. What would daddy do? Okay, and I, I, I've given them an example for a lot of years. And, and I want to be uh, your friend uh, because you're not coming back to this planet, so. No, I'm not coming back. <laughs> but I wrote, I'm leaving a lot of stuff. I wrote some the hall stuff. Path, you know, in case we... You gotta come, come back. back. I've heard of some philosophies that where we pick our parents, we choose our parents, which is pretty tricky. Yeah. Yeah, this, come back. you can find this philosophy right here. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, you are actually attracted by the energy. If you have, if you're lucky enough to find uh, parents that are willing to have you, and then that's what happened to you. And then 